In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to get started using Max for Live devices within the MuseBot framework. If you'd like to follow along on your own computer, all the files used in this and subsequent tutorials can be downloaded at the link included below in the description. While the nearly unlimited capabilities of Max make it an ideal environment in which to create bots, having to build every component of a given bot from scratch can present a variety of challenges. One task that can be particularly difficult is designing a synthesizer for your bot to play, which can quickly become an arduous process of keeping track of signal paths, chasing down clicks, and endlessly fine-tuning ADSR and filter envelopes. Building bots as Max for Live devices allows you to access the many excellent synthesizers included in Ableton Live so that you can quickly start making sound with whatever generative process you've designed in your bot. In this video, I'll quickly demonstrate how to set up a Max for Live MuseBot device with synthesizers in an Ableton Live set. The first thing you'll need to do at the beginning of any MuseBot session is open a MuseBot conductor, which acts as the central hub through which all bots communicate. With the conductor open and turned on, go ahead and open a new Ableton Live session. and click on the downward pointing arrow at the left side of the window to open the menu of available synthesizers. In this set, I'll eventually be using two MuseBot devices, one which generates drum patterns and another which generates simple melodic lines. So in the synth menu at the left, I'll first select a drum kit and drag and drop that onto my first MIDI track. And then I'll go ahead and select a keyboard and drag and drop that onto my second MIDI track. Now that I have my instruments ready, it's time to bring in the MuseBot devices that will play them. When I go into my MuseBots folder, you can see that each file is labeled either M4L Dev or M4L Set. This labeling system will make more and more sense as we continue to move through examples in later tutorials, but I'll explain it a bit here before moving on. First of all, the abbreviation Dev stands for Device, whereas Set stands for Set. When working with MuseBots and Max for Live, individual bots will be contained in devices, but since these devices can only run within an Ableton Live set, the conductor must open a set containing a given device as opposed to directly opening the device itself. So basically devices are bots, while sets are the containers that those bots can play in. Since we already have a set open and are just looking for bots to play the synths we've loaded into our MIDI tracks, we'll only be looking at devices for now. So for the drum kit we've loaded, we can use the M4L Dev GM Drummer Bot. And I can just drag and drop that file onto the MIDI track that has my drum kit. And for the synth keys, we can use the M4L Dev Melody Bot. Now, if we want to change the instruments either of these bots are playing, all we have to do is drag and drop whatever new synth we want into the corresponding MIDI track. So this way of working with MuseBots and Max for Live is great if you're just looking to do something like quickly test out a new generative system you've devised before starting to design your own synths. It can also be really useful for browsing the massive amount of sounds available in Ableton without wearing out your MIDI keyboard or drum pad. In the next tutorial, we'll look at ways to have a single bot play multiple instruments.